Hello, I'm Miles Cup of the Cron Rapier Study Group. I'm here again this week with my associate instructor, Brian Frick. This week we'll be continuing our series of interpreting the plates of Alfieri and La Sherma. This week we'll be working on plate number seven, and this plate is on wounding in seconda from a firm foot. I will be gentleman number 13, and Brian will be gentleman number 12. In order to do these plays, Alfieri suggests that they need to be done with resolution and in a proper observance of tempo, speed, and measure. So hopefully our interpretations this week will bring some of those aspects to the plays. So let us begin with the first of the variations described by Alfieri. So for the first variation of this play, Alfieri says that we both begin in terza to the outside, we've been fencing with one another, and I come into measure, turning my hand into second, and I find gentleman number 12's debole with my forte. In him allowing me to do so, I can begin the first variation that is described, which is very simply to turn my hand more so into seconda, and then finish and lunge in a proper measure like so. So demonstrating once more, I am in terza to the outside. I step into measure, I find his debole with my forte, I extend it seconda, and I lunge. And that is the first of the described variations. The second variation described of the first variation is one in which we are both fencing as before. I'm stepping in in terza, and gentleman number 12 throws an attack at me, and I parry in one tempo and strike him again in seconda, matching what the plate shows. We will demonstrate once again. We're both fencing. I've stepped into measure in terza, and I've lunged and hit him in a seconda. The second variation that is described is one in which, as the translation states, I am striking gentleman number 12 to the inside in corta. We spent a great deal of time talking about how this could happen since this play begins a description of us beginning both on the outside and terza. The interpretation that we feel very comfortable with is one in which I have come into measure, I have found gentleman number 12's blade, and he executes a cavazione in order to free his sword. In the tempo of his cavazione, I throw a long and powerful thrust in corta, to the inside, as before. Demonstrating once again, I have stepped into measure, I have found his sword, he executes a cavazione, and I throw a thrust in the tempo of his cavazione, in corta, to the inside. The third variation is one in which I have actually fainted along a high line of A after finding his sword. As we interpret the play, I have come into measure, I have found a sword, and I throw a feint to his high line of A, which would, in, in theory, cause him to parry, and as the plate states, I drop my sword into line B, throw a powerful lunge, and then recover quickly enough before he has a tempo to react. We do not think that you would do this particular action if he does something, a different reaction to that. For example, if I have found his sword here and I have thrown this fate, if he has just counterfound my sword, it does not make any sense for me to then go here. It's going to result in a double hit. So we think the plate most accurately interpreted would be in which he has thrown a parry that does not threaten myself. So I have found his sword, I have thrown a feint, and I can throw a very quick and powerful thrust in second in line B under his sword. The last variation that is talked about, the fourth one, is one in which, again, we are both in the outside in terza. I have come into measure, and I throw the same feint along high line A right here, which, of course, would again provoke a parry reaction from gentleman number 12, which I can counter with by dropping my sword, throwing a reverso to line C, and stepping out again. Once more, as the plate describes the action, I have come in on the outside line in terza, I have found a sword, I have thrown the same feint. Now I want to throw the mandrito here, and we've wondered why it is that Alfieri doesn't suggest to throw the mandrito, 
maybe the HEMA community can shed some light on that about why the reversal is preferred. But as the plate states, I have come in on the outside line in Terza. I have found his sword. I faint, and I throw a reverso to his lead leg along line C. So hopefully this will provoke some discussion about what it is that Alfieri means by throwing the reverso rather than the mandrito, which would be a logical response provoked by the tempo of his parry reaction. So in conclusion, we hope that this video interpretation of plate number seven of Alfieri will provoke some discussion and hopefully some feedback, especially about the discussion of the reverso thrown to the leg along line C. Nevertheless, we have enjoyed doing this presentation for you. I am Miles Cup of the Cron Rapier Study Group here with my associate instructor, Brian Frick. Thank you very much and have a good day.